Insect. I can't speak. <laughs> oh. Hi, I'm so glad you're here. I feel like Dora when I say that. Hola, can you say bienvenido? Muy bien. <sighs> It's now 2024. New year, new projects, and I haven't been able to figure out how I want to start the year. I have a lot of projects I want to do, but the time frame I have at the moment is not long enough, and I have a trip coming up that I am woefully unprepared for. For some reason, hi, editing Audrey here. For some reason, I didn't give any context to what I was saying. I was going to Disney World and going to Epcot's Festival of the Arts, so that's what I'm talking about. Yay, context. Okay, back to the video. And this festival was way off my radar. Two iconic components of the Festival of the Arts include Figment from Journey into Imagination, and the other is rainbows. I love rainbows. I used to have a little bit of an aversion to color when I was younger, because wearing bright colors makes you stand out a little, and I didn't want that. But let's just say I got over it. I wear whatever makes me happiest, whether it's colorful or not, and I think the dress I have planned for this is gonna make me very happy. Do I know what I'm doing? Of course not. Am I gonna do it anyway? Yeah. Okay, plan time. Hiya, me again. My computer keeps crashing every time I try to do a voice recording, so I'm just gonna pop in here and tell you the plan face to face. It's basically a white dress that is covered with sketches of characters from various movies. All of them are gonna be half sketched, half painted, like they're in the process of being colored in. The trim is gonna be rainbow and the sleeves are all gonna be rainbows. I'm gonna have rainbow ribbons in my hair and I made my earrings, which are paint palettes, and I made a bag to go with it, but you'll see that all later. Okay, to best accomplish this, design, I need a bunch of half-drawn, half-painted characters all over the dress. To do this, I thought it would be fun to follow some Draw with Disney animation tutorials and use those as the print on the dress. So if you search Draw with Disney animation on YouTube, it brings up two different playlists. The first one I clicked on has 55 videos in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll through, add them to my own playlist, so I'm only getting the characters that I want on the dress. And once I'm done making the playlist, I'm gonna draw through them all. I did do a test run already to see how long it would take me roundabout to see if I have time to do this the way I wanna do it. As it stands, looking at my calendar, I have a week and a half to finish this, and I needed to see if it would be possible to draw through all the characters I wanted on the dress, because if I don't have Time, I need to pivot very quickly. So I did a test run of the Minnie Mouse how-to. It's about 20 minutes long. I did rewind it twice, but it did take me about 20 minutes. Just from the Minnie Mouse one, I'm working under the assumption that the time on the videos is about as long as it's going to take me to draw them and color them in. So now I'm gonna go through and choose the characters I want, put them into a playlist, and then get drawing. So for there being 55 videos in this playlist, there are a lot of repeats and not a lot of the princesses. So I'm gonna see what the second playlist is like. Yes, okay, there we go. So I've gone through both playlists now and I added the ones I liked to the playlist I have going, but there weren't a ton of different characters. So I think what I'm going to do is make a list of my own and then save a picture of them to just try and draw on my own. Because there are so many characters to draw, we're gonna do this montage style, so here we go. Miss Judy Hopps is requiring quite a bit of rewinding because he's going so fast like Judy giving parking tickets.
days later and I've drawn through the entire YouTube playlist. It was a mixture of videos of animators drawing and people who are taught how to teach drawing. So all of the videos were basically moving at different speeds, which was interesting to work through. So the videos were the animators that have worked on films. They are flying through their processes for these characters. So those were a little more challenging to follow, but they were more interesting to listen to. I think it was just the one, maybe there was another one that ended up just being them drawing the character in front of you. No explanation of like placement of lines or characterization or anything like that and so I had to just kind of wait until she was done drawing him to draw what she had drawn but they didn't have videos for every character I want on the dress so I made my own list and uh, now I still have to work through that and there are six days left to finish this dress I just counted and I still have 15 characters on my list. I've already started to draw some of the other characters on that list, so 15 is what I have left to do. I've already drawn about five or six of them. I'm not limiting myself to Disney movies, so I have some Disney Channel characters on there too, like Mabel Pines from Gravity Falls, Star from Star vs. the Forces of Evil, Lewis and Amity from Owl House. So before I work through that other list of characters, I'm going to take the ones I have done already and put them onto a sheet of paper. See how big or small I have to make them. I only have 10 transfer sheets and there are so many characters and six days left. Yeah, six. Ooh, six with a buffer day. The heat just turned on. So now I'm gonna play a little bit of character Tetris and see just how many characters I can fit onto one sheet of paper. So I've arranged 17 different characters and it's only taken up about three and a half pages, which is good. That means the remaining 17 or so should fit on another three or four pages, which leaves me with two pages to spare if I want to print some more. I'm gonna print my first test page today to see if my printer can handle all of this color. On my old printer, it liked to leave lines in the color and so nothing was ever truly filled in. So I'm hoping that this other printer will work better. And I wanna figure this out now before committing hours more work into drawing more characters that might not work out in the end. I really don't want a backup plan because I want this to work. So let's go test it out. The test print went so well that I just decided to print all of the pages I had already arranged. They look pretty darn good, so I'm very excited to get to work on the rest of the drawings. I did forget to print out a character to test ironing on, so I cut a corner of one of the transfer sheets off and I drew on it. I didn't know if this was going to work, I've never tried this before. They look really good and cute and he's just, he's adorable. So yeah, now knowing how well it's all working so far, I'm gonna start drawing the rest of them. Hi, it is yet again a couple days later. I thought I was all done drawing characters and then I decided to add five more, which took me a couple hours. At this point, because looking at my calendar, one, two, I have three days left. I, I need to get going. When we hit about the four or five day mark, I decided that drawing them by looking at the picture was taking too long and I was never going to get all of the characters that I wanted on the dress, doing it the way I was. So unfortunately, I resorted to sketchy tracing the characters. I would trace a rough sketch. It did speed along the process quite a bit and that's how I was able to add five more characters. I did what I had to do. And you can tell which ones that I drew and which ones I didn't based on if I signed it or not. Because I just didn't feel right signing my work if it's not really my work. It's just a small detail that nobody would have known about until I just told you all. Anyway, now it's time to get into actually making the dress. Number one, choose the patterns. I am not going to willy-nilly make up my own for this because I don't have time to mess up. Number two, cutting out the fabric. Most of it is on plain white fabric, which is necessary based on the iron-ons that I have, but um, is also terrible terrifying because it means I can't get anything on it, which is maybe not the best choice to take into the parks. It's okay. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. 
Number three, after the pieces are all cut out, I will then decide where to place all the characters on the pre-cut pieces. Any characters that have to do with the park, I'm gonna put on the front. Everybody else can fall where they will. Except there are a few favorites of mine that would not be found in the parks, but I wanna be able to see them, so they'll probably go on the front anyway. And then once the layout is done, what am I at, number three, four? Why did I do numbers? After that, I'll iron them all on, and then all that's left is sewing it all together. I also have a rainbow patterned fabric for the sleeves and the trim. Hopefully I have enough to do all of that. I got two yards, I should have plenty. So yeah, I've been talking for 10 minutes, which is like nine minutes too long. So I'm gonna get to work, let's go. Staring at the flutter sleeves right now, I hate them. So I'm going to figure out a different kind of sleeve, but I'm gonna wait until tomorrow because it is quite late. So I will see you tomorrow. Hello. I got most of it put together yesterday, but I stopped at the sleeves because I usually, and I'm gonna stop myself right here because I tried something and filmed the entire thing, but honestly it didn't pan out and it's not worth showing the entire process and making this video longer. So we're gonna skip ahead. I decided to go with a sleeve from a dress pattern called the Daphne dress from Hubba Ding on Etsy. Here I was putting it all together and that's when I realized my bobbin ran out of thread. And here's where I'm trying to decide if I cinch it at the wrists or leave it open and do these big dramatic sleeves. I ended up doing that, but I needed to add some more fabric, so there I am cutting that. I did have to use the seam ripper to open the sleeves I had already sewn to add the extra panel of fabric, and then it was just a matter of putting it all together. And I was watching Jurassic World while I was working, so that's why I look like that. <laughs> And after that was all put together, I started on the accessories. I decided to make some little paint palette earrings and a purse that's a box of crayons. To do this, I first tried to paint it yellow and I thought I was going to paint all the details on. I was doing this all the day before I left and that was going to take forever. So I decided to just hot glue some fabric onto it. I drew the Layola logo on my iPad and I took the image of the inside of the crayon box and I printed both onto some iron-on vinyl. I ironed that onto some white fabric, cut it out, hot glued that onto the rest of the fabric. Then I just sewed a little tube of the extra extra rainbow fabric to make the strap, and now, dear friends, we've reached the reveal. all done. It might be my new favorite thing I've ever made. Like I said before, I haven't always been super comfortable wearing bright colors. So once I was done getting ready for the day, I felt a little bit of that insecurity and uneasiness seeping back in. And that's a weird but good thing about content creation. I knew I had to get pictures and little clips of me wearing the dress in the parks because that's the video. And because I knew I needed to do that, I had to push that insecurity and push that uneasiness away and just go for it. The first reaction I had in the day was less than positive, but that was one negative in a sea of positives. I met so many random people and had the most lovely conversations that were all prompted by my dress. It was an extra layer of magic that I wasn't expecting, but I'm so glad it happened. There were people that found their favorite character, their favorite movie. They were trying to name all of the movies, name all the characters. A few people even recognized my Disney Channel characters and the Spark Shorts bunny. I could sit here and tell you about it for a really long time. This dress was fun to make, fun to wear, and fun to talk about. I love it. And if you liked it too, you can let me know by hitting the like button down below. If you want to see what else I'll be making throughout the year, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss when I post, hit the notification bell and YouTube will let you know when I have a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!